Hey YouTubers, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you an extremely simple frequency adjustable LED flasher strobe circuit that can handle higher current LEDs as well as LED strip lights. First I'll show you the basic design for lower current LEDs. Second, explain in detail how the circuit works. And lastly, show you the modifications to allow higher current. The circuit works with voltages between 9.5 and 14 volts DC. Depending on which version you choose, you can use as little as three components or a maximum of six components, excluding the LEDs that you choose to use. Okay, as you can see, I have my power supply unit all ready to go. The circuit's assembled on the breadboard. And the way it's set up on the breadboard, from here to the left is the simplified version. And when you combine everything together, that is the higher current version. Over here is a Piranha high brightness LED. And over here is a one watt ultra bright white LED. Now before I show you a few different demonstrations, I first would like to go over the schematic, point out the components, the values, and explain exactly how the circuit works. Okay, right over here is your nine and a half to 14 volt DC positive rail, and the bottom is the negative rail. Right here is a resistor, it's a quarter watt resistor, and the value can vary between 470 ohms and 4700 ohms, or 4.7K. Just below that, you have an electrolytic capacitor rated 16 volts or 25, either one. And you're going to be using values between 220 microfarad and 4700 microfarad. You can use any of the transistors shown here in either position makes no difference. These aren't the only ones that work. There are other TO92 NPN transistors that you can also use. Right over here, you have a 200 ohm quarter watt resistor. Up here is a 100 to 200 ohm. You can judge what you need, half watt to one watt. You're definitely going to want to use half to one watt. You're going to touch this when the circuit's in operation after a few minutes. And you're going to make sure that it's not getting too hot. If it's getting too hot, you're going to up the wattage. Very simple. Over here, I'm going to be demonstrating using a one watt LED. You can use a three watt, or you can use strip lights like I used in my video for well lighting inside of a vehicle. Those will also work just fine. For the lower current version, from the pen right here all the way to the right, you wouldn't have any of that. You would take the Piranha LED or any other ultra bright LED, connect it to the collector, and then connect the other side to the negative rail. If you want a much brighter flash and you want the circuit to handle more current, then duplicate exactly what you see right here. Now the way this works is very simple. Power flows in on the top rail through the resistor. Now what the resistor does, it limits the flow of current to charge this capacitor. So think of this as a faucet. You only open the valve a little bit and a little bit of water is going to flow into a cup and it's going to take that cup a little while to fill up with water because you have a very low rate of flow going into that cup. If you open the faucet all the way, meaning make this resistor value extremely low or eliminate it altogether, the capacitor will charge up very quickly just like the cup of water would fill up very quickly. Over here you have a transistor that's connected backwards Normally the collector goes to the positive rail, the emitter goes to the negative, and then you turn the transistor on and off using a positive voltage applied to the base. The way this circuit works is the transistor is installed in reverse, and what happens when enough voltage is applied to the emitter, it's going to break down. Once it breaks down, the emitter is going to be able to conduct and allow current to flow backwards into the emitter and out the collector. And if you had the lower current version with the LED right here, it would flash. The reason why it flashes is because once this breaks down and the current does flow through, you're going to have a voltage drop over here on this side. And what's going to have to happen, the transistor is going to turn off while the whole thing charges up again. Once the voltage climbs to a certain point, this will break down, allowing the current to flow through again. And the cycle repeats over and over. 
for the higher current version that's shown here without the LED in this position. You're going to take the collector. It's going to go through a 200 ohm resistor. This value is very important. You must keep it low for the circuit to work properly. It's going to connect to the base of this transistor. So every time that pulse is detected, it's going to turn on this transistor, allowing current to flow through a current limiting resistor into your ultra bright, higher powered LED or strip light. Then it's going to flow into the collector, out the emitter, and to the battery negative. Okay, let me give you a close up of the breadboard and then give you a few demonstrations. All right, so over here is the positive on the breadboard. It goes from this set of pins here all the way to this point here, the top row. And the bottom is a negative from this point right over here all the way along the top to the very end. Over here is the current limiting resistor which adjusts how quickly this capacitor will charge. Lower value, charge quicker, the light will flash faster, and use a higher value, this will charge much slower, and the light will flash slower. You can also increase the value of the capacitor without touching the resistor to make this flash slower, or you can decrease it to make it go faster. Over here is the transistor that I used, which is a 2N4401, and I'm only using the emitter and collector. Right here is a Piranha Ultra Bright LED. Back here is the half watt 100 ohm resistor that's connected to this 1 watt Ultra Bright LED. And behind here, you can see there's another transistor, the NPN, that's used to drive the 1 watt LED. And there's a resistor right back there. You can see it now. 200 ohm to drive the base of the transistor to turn it on and off. If you need anything that's shown in this video, a breadboard kit, components, the power supply unit, or even the ultra compact oscilloscope, which I'll be using in a minute to show you what the waveform looks like, then I posted a link in the video description area to make it very easy for you to find those things along with a coupon code. So now I'm going to back the camera away so you can see the power supply unit. And what I'm going to do first is go over here and we're going to take this part of the circuit off because this is taking the low current version and making it the high current version. So I'm going to put this back right over there. So now it's going to be flashing this LED. So let me back away, set the power supply, 12 and a half volts, and give you a few demonstrations. Let me power up the unit. So let me turn down the light so you can see it. Okay, now what I want to show you is I'm going to make a few changes. First, I'm going to show you that changing out the resistor will adjust the flash rate. Right now we're at 4.7K, so let me remove that one. Now I'm going to pop in a 2.7 and the flash rate should increase. Now you can see it's faster. Now I'm going to pull that one out. We're going to use a 1K. Increase the flash rate even more. And it's pretty bright, even though we're using the lower current version right now, not the high. Now let's go even lower, down to a 470 ohm. Should go even faster than that. Now before I connect up the high current side of the circuit, what I'd like to do is show you how voltage has an effect on the flash rate as well. And the limits of the voltage that you can use will vary depending on the resistor value and the capacitor. So the way it's set up now, I got about a 3 volt spread. So let me just show you. Let me lower it. Let me go up one notch. See it's flashing faster at 13.6. 13.7. Thirteen eight. Now let's lower it back to 12. It's slower. And let's make it 11.8. Even slower. 
Let's bring this down to like 11.2. And you can see the flash rate is much slower. Now I'm going to pop out that transistor and show you that even the transistor has an effect on the flash rate as well. Let's put this back to 12.5. 12 12 and we pop that one out. Uh, here we go. Now you see how fast that one's going? Very, very rapid. It actually looks like it's not even flashing on camera, but it's actually flashing very, very quickly using a different transistor. So let me go over to here and lower it. Let me see if it'll flash at 9. It will if I adjust the values just right. But let me just go a little higher here. See, it's 10.1. There you go. 10.1 with that transistor. And you can see the flash rate is slow again. Let's increase. 11. 12. It's going so fast it actually looks like it's steady. going faster and faster and now it's steady so around 13.8 so there's like a three and a half volt spread on that one alright let me put the other transistor back in and hook up the high current portion of the circuit now I have to adjust the values because this value is way too low to drive that really really bright LED let me try a 2.7 first that should make it operate well Yep. All right, so now we're driving a much brighter LED. Much, much brighter. And I could turn it all the way down to, I think, 9 point, yeah. That's about the bottom, it's 9.5. And like I said, you can adjust all the values to get exactly what you want. So let me put this back to 12. Let's try 13. I think it'll start flashing again at 14. All right, 13, 6. But it will flash up to around 14 if I play around with the capacitor value. But this is super bright, and no other ones on YouTube actually show the circuit with this modification. So let me put this back here. 12, put the light back on. Let's pop this out. This is a 470. Now I'm going to put a much higher value. This is going to be like a 4700, I think. Okay, that's a much larger value. And you can see it's flashing very slow now, even at the 12.6. So if you wanted to use this at 12.6, you can easily get the flash rate exactly the way you want it. Okay, I connected up this dual channel pocket oscilloscope to the circuit. Really nice scope. If you haven't seen my video, check it out. Link is in the video description area. Right here it's on scan. You can see this is the point where it goes from zero voltage and it charges the capacitor up. Right there is charging. And the spike is where the LED actually flashes. You get that little bump up in voltage before it drops all the way back down and it charges again. You can see you got the sawtooth pattern all the way through. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.